Hey guys, it's Jocelyn from the Vagina Doc Physical Therapy and Wellness. In this video, you are going to learn different ways and different strategies to breathe and how to most effectively utilize your diaphragm while you breathe. In the previous video, you learned that as you breathe in, the diaphragm, which is a dome shape, flattens. And as it flattens, it pushes the abdominal contents down and your pelvic floor muscles help control the, the descent as they because they lengthen or they stretch. And then as you exhale, the diaphragm recoils, the pelvic floor recoils, and your organs return back to where they started. That only happens if you're using your diaphragm as the main breathing muscle. A lot of people utilize other muscles to help breathe rather than using their diaphragm because they're using their diaphragm to help stabilize themselves. And I know that they do this because I watch people holding their breath as they transition from sitting to standing, rolling in bed, going up the stairs. So step one is realizing what you do. Now, getting into how to breathe. Upper chest breathing is when you breathe and you see your shoulders rise. Or if I'm standing here and I breathe and my chest basically goes like this. If as I breathe, there's not much expansion of my abdomen, my belly, and there's not much movement out here. As in contrary to that, strictly belly breathing looks like this. And I'm not very good at this, but if I, most of my movement is happening here. So my belly expands, I'm not raising here, but there wasn't, at least I wasn't focus, focus, focusing on it. There wasn't much movement in my rib cage. A balance strategy is where your chest expands, your belly expands, and your ribs expand out here and even in the back. So, to see from the front what that looks like is this. And I'll lift my shirt so you can see. Now from the side. You can tell what you're doing by putting a hand here and a hand here. And as you breathe in, there should be equal movement in both places. Then if you have four hands, you can do all four spots, but then you can do something like this to make sure you're raising in your chest and the sides of your ribs, and then go and do the same thing for your belly. I have my patients practice this in different positions and different movements. So if I'm just standing here or sitting here, it's a different challenge than if I'm on my hands and knees position. The reason is, is because when my hands are in contact with the surface, other muscles that just help the diaphragm have a different role now, or, or their role changes just slightly. So the positions that I have my patients get in vary depending on what their ultimate goals are. But ideally, you can breathe in through your nose, out through your nose, or out through your mouth in all the positions and all the activities. So that means as you get into running, you should, before you progress, you're breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth, or out through your nose. <clears throat> practice this walking, practice this through your core exercises, practice this in isolation. If it's, an easy, if it's easy in isolation, it's time to move on. You don't have to just do that unless you're adding it on to a mobility program, a stretching program, a meditative program, a mindset program. Uh, you don't have to continue just training and unless your therapist or whoever you're working with tells you that you should just do the breathing in isolation. I do want to talk about mouth shape. When you practice your exhalation through your nose, I want you to utilize pursed lips. So pursed lips meaning it's like you're blowing out birthday candles or you're 
gently blowing off petals of a flower. It's gentle and it's circular like this. The reason why we do that is twofold. The first is that it helps create friction for the air to slow our exhale because ideally we want to be able to ex our we want our exhale to be twice the length of our inhale or longer. It just depends on your training regimen. The second reason is that I don't know exactly the data on this, but I, I've heard this a couple times in different trainings, is that when you make a circular shape out of your mouth, it mimics the shape of other pertinent muscles. In this case, the sphincter between the diaphragm and the gut, the sphincter between the, so sphincter being a circular muscle, uh, the sphincter of our anus, so that helps maintain fecal continence, and our urethral sphincter, so the muscle that cuts off the flow of urine, that's circular as well. So we're, when I'm training my patients and clients, I'm trying to utilize what their system is designed to do. So you doing things like mouth shape is just a, a method of setting the system up to work as it's designed.